So in this presentation, I intend to introduce uh, the file and core data, the major characters, uh, the classification, and obviously the um, most important characters of the subfile coming in the core data. Now this is the first module which is listed in the, in the syllabus of third semester BSc Zoology Co. So uh, the animal kingdom is uh, divided uh, first into major uh, Phyla, and uh, there are more than about 30 animal phyla, 30 to 50 animal phyla, and uh, the last major group um, of the animal kingdom is known as the phylum chordata, which includes the most advanced uh, group of animal kingdom, and uh, it was created by Balfour in 1880, and the name of this phylum uh, derives from two Greek words, the chordae. C H O R D E, which means a code or a string, and eta means diary. So put together, this refers to uh, the presence of a stiff rod like structure along the dorsal side, which is known as a notochord. A notochord, the word itself comes from uh, two separate words. The first, uh, uh, the noton, which is a Greek term, which means back, and corda. In Latin, it means code. So, a code in the back that is a notochord. Okay, it is found in all the members of the phylum at some stages of their lives, and uh, that is why the chordata has uh, given the been given the name uh, the one with the code, which the code here referred to the notochord. So, notochord is a unique uh, character uh, chordates. Now, um, the whole animal kingdom. Uh, it is uh, uh, based upon this uh, symmetry. It is divided uh, into like uh, groups ranging from asymmetric forms to bilaterally symmetric forms. And animals that bilat that possess bilateral symmetry can be divided into two groups: the protostomes and deuterostomes. And uh, it is based on their uh, embryonic development. And uh, the deuterostomes. Uh, um, itself uh, consists of two major phyla, uh, the uh, phylum uh, here you can see the slides. Now the major fundamental characters of phylum chordata. The four uh, basic fundamental uh, characters of uh, phylum chordata which distinguishes uh, it from the non chordata groups as well as it also provides the chordates with uh, uh, ad uh, an advantageous nature over the non chordate groups. These are the four ones, the most fundamental one, notochord, the first one, and it is the, because of the presence of notochord, the no chordata gets its name. The second one is dorsal, hollow, tubular nerve cord. The nerve cord which extends from the anterior tip to the posterior tip uh, dorsally above the notochord, it is a dorsal hollow nerve cord. Then you have the other paired uh, pharyngeal gill slits. They are gill slits or openings present on the pharyngeal wall that uh, uh, communicates the interior of the pharynx with the external environment. Then the presence of postenal tail that does uh, you can see uh, posterior to the uh, anus. Now we will see in detail what are uh, the various uh, characters and how it is being located. Uh, the dorsal hollow nerve cord, uh, it is actually um, derived from the ectoderm. The ectoderm, uh, during the embryonic development, it rolls into a hollow tube, that is a cylinder like structure. Uh, and in chordates, the um, dorsal hollow nerve cord is located dorsally to the notochord. Uh, on the contrary to this, in uh, protostomes, the nervous system is characterized by a solid nerve cord, that is, it is not hollow, okay, located ventrally or laterally to the gut. In vertebrates, uh, in the case of vertebrates, we can see the neural tube or the, um, the nerve cord, it develops into brain and spinal cord uh, during the development, and these two comprise together to, send to form the central nervous system. That is the anterior region of the nerve cord gets specialized to form the brain. 
in some it is otherwise known as cerebral vesicle when we will be looking into detail the urocordates and cephalocordates um, you may even find a term known as cerebral vesicle and that is nothing else it is the brain itself so it, it gets enclosed by a this brain gets enclosed by a protective uh, bony or cartilage and cranium so that is also a character which is uh, considered to be an advanced one the posterior part of the nerve cord it becomes a spinal cord and this gets protected within the vertebral column so dorsal hollow nerve cord it uh, originates from ectodermal cells and these ectodermal cells during the course of development rolls into a tube like structure or hollow tube and uh, uh, this is what later develops into the nerve cord so it is in the form of uh, the nerve cord is in the form of a longitudinal hollow or tubular nerve cord lying just above the notochord or dorsal to the notochord it extends lengthwise in the body the um, there is a, the nerve cord serves for the integration and coordination of the body activities now the second character it is a notochord the notochord is otherwise known as a uh, coda dorsalis the notochord is an elongated rod like structure extending the length of the body um, it is um, actually flexible and uh, it is found in the embryonic stage so once again notochord is actually a flexible um, rod shaped uh, elongated structure found in the um, found extending um, throughout the length of the body it is derived from mesodermal uh, cells and uh, um we can see that uh, it is found in the embryonic stages of all the cordates but uh, in um, the it is found in the adult stages only of only in some of the uh, cordate species uh, notochord is a, a prime diagnostic feature of the phylum cordata uh, from which actually the phylum itself get its name from it serves as a support or uh, internal skeleton and is not to be uh, confused with a nerve cord it is entirely a different structure and in uh, lower cordates uh, the, they possess the typical notochord while in uh, vertebrates Uh, the notochord is present only in the uh, embryonic uh, stages while in the post embryonic stages it is surrounded or it is replaced by a vertebral column uh, formed of either bone or bone or cartilage uh, so uh, uh, the notochord i suppose it is clear okay notochord is a uh, flexible rod shaped uh, structure mesodermal or nodigen found in the embryonic stages of all cordates and in the adult stages of some cordate species now uh, the third character is a pharyngeal uh, gill slits they are paired ones so they are paired openings in the pharynx that um, uh, actually um, extend uh, to the outside environment a series of paired lateral gill slits that perforate the pharyngeal wall the openings present on the pharyngeal wall Uh, behind the mouth and these are, are uh, variously named uh, in various groups uh, um, you may find pharyngeal gill slits branchial uh, pouches or branchial clefts visceral clefts or pouches but it is actually origin, uh, originally basic pharyngeal gill slits okay they serve uh, primarily for the passage of water from the pharynx to outside uh, and uh, helps in bathing the gills for uh, it, uh, the efficient respiration uh, you may you may have seen in the case of fishes the, wa- the fish is taking water into the mouth and the water moves out through these pharyngeal gill slits while bathing the gills uh, with the water and during this process two things occur one is the food which is taken along with the water it gets uh, retained within the buccal cavity in the pharyngeal region when the water is filtered out at the same time the uh, or if when the water moves uh, bathing the gills there is a sub, uh, respiration going on um, so it is actually um, the water current uh, secondly aids in filter feeding by retaining food particles as well as it also helps in the uh, what call, gill respiration in lower uh, cordates as well as in uh, lower aquatic vertebrates the gill slits are functional throughout the life but in higher vertebrates you can see that the gill slits um, 
during the development it gets mod modified uh, with the development of pulmonary respiration in tetrapods these uh, there is a uh, amphibians reptiles birds and mammals the gill slits are modified into components of the ear tonsils and the thymus glands um, but in uh, fishes these pharyngeal uh, gill slits are uh, modified to uh, support the gills and uh, it helps in gill respiration now posterior tail that's the fourth fundamental character it is a posterior elongation of the body extending beyond the anus the tail contains skeletal structures and muscles uh, in the aquatic species for example uh, fishes <coughs> it provide a structure for locomotion that helps in locomotion in uh, some of the terrestrial vertebrates the tail also helps in balancing and uh, coat spiritual etc in humans and apes you can find we cannot find a tail so what happened to the tail the tail is reduced to a vestigial coccyx or what we call as a um, tail bone so when we are when we you may have studied uh, vestigial organs actually this posterior tail <coughs> is a vestigial organ it's actually reduced from a small tail bone now characters which are common to um chordates and uh, higher uh, non chordates you can see that uh, there are certain characters which are common or which are shared between the chordates and non chordates uh, first one is axillation the body in both the uh, chordates as well as higher in uh, non chordates has a distinct polar axis that is they have a anterior pole and a posterior pole now, the anterior end is uh, gets differentiated into the head region or the cephalic region and during locomotion that is a region which is actually uh, preceding the whole body the posterior end forms a tail in most cases so this axis extending from head to tail is known as the anterior posterior axis the even though the axillary body organization is uh, found in both higher non chordates and chordates but this doesn't mean that these two groups have evolved from the same ancestor the reason is how this has been formed the origin of the head region or the mouth region is different in these two groups in chordates it is uh, uh, deuterostomic while in non chordates it is protostomic so the pattern in which the mouth is formed it is different in two groups even though these two groups do show cephalization as uh, definite uh, head region but how they have formed is uh, different in these two groups now second uh, character it is bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry so due to the existence of this anterior posterior axis we feature just uh, saw the body of all the chordates and higher non chordates exhibit bilateral symmetry i hope you remember what is bilateral symmetry that is the body can be divided into two similar halves or equal halves uh, with a plane that passes through the center in the anterior posterior axis okay Now the third one is triploblastic condition. We have already seen during in the germ uh, in the embryonic stages, the body the uh, the embryo is composed or can be differentiated into three different layers: the outermost ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm internally. So that kind of an embryo it is known as uh, with a condition known as triploblastic condition. And the lower non chordates do have a diploblastic condition, which doesn't have any mesoderm. Instead, they have mesoglia. Now the Uh, next character it is the presence of true coelom or they are eucoelomate the coelom is actually the body cavity that exists between the body wall and the digestive tube we have already seen it. so how the coelom becomes a true coelom only when the coelom is completely uh, what you call um, um, lined with a mesodermal with lined with mesodermal cells uh, however uh, even though the uh, echinoderms and the uh, chordates they are uh, what you call uh, you coelomate or with a true coelom but how the coelom is formed is different in the case of um, chordates the uh, coelom is formed by a schizocoelous condition while in the case of uh, um, echinoderms it is entrocoelous type so how they are formed is different i hope you remember what is schizocoelous and what is entrocoelous then next is metamorphism that is it is a condition where the body can be divided into Uh, a linear series of 
similar body segments. So here each body segment is known as a metamere or otherwise it is a somite. Now the, there are three main groups which possess, um, which is, uh, which shows metamerism: Annelida, Arthropoda, and Chordata. In Annelida and Arthropoda, unlike Chordates, they have a metamerism internally as well as externally. But in Chordates, the metamerism is more obvious internally, very uh, less clearly found externally. The external um, the um, metamerism it is found in fishes with respect to the arrangement of scales. Uh, in the case of uh, vertebrates, but it is uh, found in the arrangement of muscles and vertebrae. So it is not found externally. Then tube with tube body plan where you can see the elementary canal it is a tube which is found within placed within a uh, body wall isn't it it is uh, considered another tube because this uh, elementary canal is suspended in a silo and this um, body wall and the uh, elementary canal do have a very clear silo in between so it is like a tube within a tube body uh, body plan so the major characters uh, which is share which are shared between the cordates and the higher non cordates are axiation that is uh, the head region tail region the anterior posterior axis etc bilateral symmetry triploblastic condition true silo metamorphic now we can see what the characters, um, uh, the advanced ones uh, found in Chordata over the other phyla. So the first one is living endoskeleton. Uh, you may remember what we saw in the case of arthropods. Arthropods don't have an endoskeleton, but they have an exoskeleton. But these exoskeleton, they don't grow along with the growth of the body. Isn't it? The chitinous exoskeleton, they may have to be shed off regularly so that it can grow, the body can grow. But in the case of chordates, the endoskeleton is living. That is, it grows with the growth of the body and hence permits the indefinite growth or freedom of movement, etc. The second one is uh, efficient respiration. Um, in the lower groups, in the non chordates we already saw that uh, one of the uh, very efficient uh, type of respiration is with the help of trachea. But the tracheal respiration, um, it uh, suits only uh, smaller sized animals when the size of the animal increases when the t now amount of uh, tissue increases the organ system organization develops what happens is the respiration may the respiratory surfaces or organs have to be more efficient and lungs in the case of terrestrial uh, animals uh, gill respiration as in the case of fishes the respiration with the help of air sacs in the case of birds they are all very efficient kind of respiration which is more advanced than that of the tracheal respiration or any other kind of respiration found in the uh, non cordy The next one is efficient circulation. Actually, the plethoroscular system uh, forms an important medium for um, respiratory gases and several other um, vital activities in the uh, uh, occurring in the body of the cordates. The last one is centralized nervous system. It's actually advanced uh, not only the nervous system, but the sensory structures, the sense organs, uh, the uh, responses, the quick response to stimuli, everything, they are highly advanced uh, as against the non colleagues. Now, we are just comparing the colleagues with the non colleagues over here. I just listed a few of the features um, in, uh, in which the cordage uh, uh, is different from non cordage but there are plenty of other uh, characters which can be listed along with that. The first is symmetry. Obviously, in non cordage you can see that uh, the symmetry ranges from asymmetrical to uh, what we call uh, bilateral symmetry or radial symmetry. In the case of cordage, they are purely uh, bilaterally symmetrical. In uh, uh, metamerism, uh, metamerism is found in cordates and few non cordates but most of the non cordates are not metamerically segmented. Then uh, postanal tail and uh, notochord it is present only in the case of cordates and never in the case of uh, non cordates. Um, some of the non cordates uh, and cordates they are um, what we call triploplastic but most of the non cordates are diploplastic. Then uh, coelom, again, all the cordates are true, uh, use coelom or with the true coelom, while non cordates, uh, most of them are acylomate, some of them are acylomate, some of them are uh, what you call um, pseudo coelomate, and obviously, higher non cordates, you can see they are um, what you call um, with true coelom. 
now gut position and the heart position the alimentary canal it is positioned uh, on the ventral side in the case of uh, caudates but uh, in the case of um, non caudates it is dorsal to the nerve cord gut position with respect to the uh, nerve cord so in the case of caudates it is ventral in position uh, while in uh, non caudates it is dorsal to the nerve cord now uh, the um, position of the heart Basically, in the case of cordage, it is ventrally placed. While in the case of uh, non-cordage, it is uh, dorsally placed or it is uh, laterally placed. In lower non-cordage, it is altogether absent, obviously. Now, uh, pharyngeal gill slits, again, it is present in the case of cordage, while it is absent in the case of non-cordage. Hepatic portal system, it is present in cordage, while it is absent in non-cordage. You can see uh, renal portal system and all. But uh, hepatic portal system is an advanced character found in cortex cell. Uh, regarding nervous system, uh, the nerve cord it is dorsal in position, it is hollow, and it is non-ganglionated in the nerve cord. While uh, in the case of non-cortex, the nerve cord is ventral, it is double uh, nerve cord, and uh, frequently you can see ganglia in the along the nerve cord. So it is ventrally positioned. It is solid. It's not tubular. It is solid. Then it is um, um, what do you call um, double, and uh, it bears ganglia frequently. So these are the uh, major features upon which these two groups are. Now regarding the classification, the phylum Chordata it is classified into three subphyla based upon the character of notochord, how the notochord is formed. Uh, we have cephalochordata. Eurochordata and vertebrata are the three subphyla. The uh, earlier cephalochordata and eurochordata, along with hemichordata, were included under protochordata, while vertebrata were uh, I mean, considered to be the true chordate or the eucordate. But uh, later, hemichordata was taken out from the phylum chordata and put it in under um, non chordata. And uh, nowadays, protochordate, the term is not used uh, in it. Longer. Now, cephalochordata, um, it is a, one of the primitive groups, obviously, and they possess uh, notochord throughout their life, uh, uh, life cycle. Eurochordata, on the other hand, they possess uh, notochord only in their larval stages, but in the adult stage, it is totally absent. And vertebrata, they possess notochord in the embryonic stages. In the uh, post embryonic stage, it gets uh, modified by a uh, Vertebral column. The um, cephalochordata and eurochordata, they don't have a well defined uh, head or cranium, that is a skull, and hence they are grouped together under a cranium. While the vertebrata, they do have well defined uh, head and cranium, so grouped under craniata. Now, eurochordata are discussed into three classes Acidiaceae, Thaliaceae, and Darvaceae. The detail of which we will be looking into it later when we study Eurocodata the subphylum. Now, vertebrata it is uh, divided divide into uh, two uh, divisions, Agnatha and Nathostomata. Uh, and this uh, division is based upon the character of jaws. So, Agnatha, as the name indicates, a Natha. Natha means jaws. So, Agnatha uh, lack true jaws and paired appendages. So they include um, uh, the fish-like primitive forms and it is classified into two classes, uh, extinct um, groups under Ostracodomy and Cyclostomata which is a modern Echnata. Then uh, Nathostomata, the division is further divided into two super classes, Pisces and Tetrapoda. Uh, this uh, division is actually uh, is a little more clear, isn't it? Pieces, in, that is fishes. So, includes all the fishes. They are aquatic forms, possess paired fins for locomotion. While uh, tetrapods, they have the uh, four legs, that is a term indicates. So, they have legs for locomotion. They are mostly um, terrestrial vertebrates. The superclass pieces, it is divided into three um, classes. Placodermy, chondric thighs, and ostic thighs. While tetrapoda, it is classified into four classes amphibia, reptilia, and uh, aves and mammals. Now you can see the placodermy, that is a whole superclass species along with amphibia. Uh, during their uh, embryonic development, they don't develop an amnion 
for uh, protecting as a protective mem membrane um, for the developing embryo that is anamniota is actually those groups which doesn't develop an amnia while uh, reptilia apes and mammals they do possess amnia so they are grouped under amniota so what is an amnia it is actually the uh, embryonic membrane that holds or protects the developing embryo and this amnion contains an amniotic fluid and it is because of the amniotic fluid containing eggs the reptiles aves and mammals mammals may even be reptiles and aves they they are successful on the terrestrial environment they lay eggs on the dry terrestrial uh, conditions just because it is a uh, advanced character so an amniota and amniota now slides it and uh, differences among cranial ignata and apura now the last among them it is the silent features of the subphyla the three subphyla the most important features only uh, listed over here while the detailed characters classification will be de dealt in the following future classes cephalocoryta as the name indicates not to cord and nerve cord are is present in cephalocords it is present throughout the life or uh, uh, along the entire length of the body in urocoryta not to cord and nerve cord is present only in the larva the larva is a tadpole like one and uh, while adult it is sac like they don't have any of the characters found uh, any of the um, chordate characters they are usually sessile and they are encased with a protective uh, membrane made up of tunic it's a chemical uh, we'll be looking into it later and since they possess tunic the urochordates are commonly known as tunicates now the subphylum vertebrata here the notochord gets replaced by a vertebrate column we have already seen it and their body is divisible uh, into distinct head neck trunk and tail so i hope whatever is very clear to you if you have any uh, doubts regarding any of the topics we have discussed here you can uh, just put up it put it up in the comment box and uh, another thing make note of all the points whatever has been present in the slide whatever have been discussed in the um, given at an audio uh, you please make note so that uh, while uh, preparing assignments homeworks and all it will be easy for you to uh, uh, submit